Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. This is Afsha and I'm making this video from my car while I'm waiting to get food from one of my favorite restaurants in town. So I just received a few uh, messages from a couple of people asking me about the approach that I used to uh, pass the FBGEE exam and I don't even remember if I have talked about this before in any of my videos but I, uh, I just wanted to make a separate video talking about the approach that I used to make it um, clear to you guys so if anybody's um, finding finding trouble understanding how exactly to uh, study from all these books that I mentioned about uh, this will be this can be their go-to video so yeah so how I started off is I actually studied um, pharmacology because since pharmacology forms the basis for this exam so the clinical sciences section is about 35 percent of this exam so it's it's very very important to brush your pharmacology knowledge what you started back in your um uh, med school so i did pharmacology i did all the chapters i reread all the chapters from uh pharmacology by lippincott which is i believe book number one that i talked about in my other video which would be linked somewhere somewhere in this video or maybe in the description so yeah so i studied um uh pharmacology all the chapters from pharmacology book by lippincott and then i um i revised all those chapters from the comprehensive pharmacy review for naplex which is the cpr uh, the, the important chapters that i talked about in the other video uh for cpr pretty much correspond to all the important chapters that are there in the pharmacology and pharmacology book by Lippincott and that is I mean those chapters in my view are enough to um, get a good grab on your pharmacology knowledge in addition to toxicology and um, medicinal chemistry that are there in the in the CPR so I first studied everything from pharmacology book by Lippincott, then I did CPR. And while doing CPR side by side, I did um, the APHA book. And uh, I did the whole APHA book. I mean, I read every, every single chapter in the APHA book. Now, me, a lot of friends ask me about the time it took me to um, prepare for this exam. And I took roughly about six to seven months to get done with this exam and to prepare with this exam because that that was the time when i actually started studying properly like actually started giving eight hours nine hours a day to my studies but you can do that doing three hours four hours a day too i have friends who have done this i believe my food is here no it wasn't okay so i have friends who have done this uh the the whole thing in uh, a year and in two years too and that happens when you have lesser time to study you have a full-time job and stuff like that or other responsibilities but yes uh so uh doing all these books in this way and then when i was done with um, my APHA and cpr i started practicing questions like 10 questions each day from the manan shroff book so by the time I was at the end of uh, CPR and APHA book, I started revising Manan Shroff. So I did like 10, 20 questions each each night before sleeping. And then I used to take notes and revise all those uh, questions that I got wrong. And that actually helped me a lot. Because uh, the Manan Shroff book, in my perspective, I don't know if it was my lack of knowledge or what, but uh, there were a lot of things in that book in the intersection area which I never have heard about. Not even my med, not even in my med school, and neither in CPR or pharmacology book by Lippincott or even in APHA. So that that book also played a major role in making my understanding better. And uh, the, one of the things that I love about Manan Shroff is that it's built on past papers. So this book is actually built on the pattern that this exam is based on. Yeah, so it took me about six to seven months to study for this exam, but I, I studied aggressively. I did like eight, nine hours a day. And one of the tips that I would like to give you guys over here, and it was given to me at the time when I was going to take my exam and 
I just did all the books like one time and I was like, I'm good to go. I think I'll, I'll pass it, etc. But then I spoke to one of my friends who is now a practicing pharmacist over here in Dallas. And she told me not to even attempt sitting in the exam if I haven't revised everything I studied at least five times. And I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, that's going to take me about a year or so. How can I do that? And she was like, no, this is my experience, Afsha. And she she was the one who gave her um, FPGE, FPGE a couple of times. And she was like, don't even attempt on sitting the on the exam before you have revised everything that you studied about four, uh, four, four or five times. I was like, I cannot do this. I was like, um, I was so frustrated. I was like, I'm just going to give it a try and see if it doesn't pass. I'm going to go ahead and redo it. But I cannot, I, I just cannot revise everything five times. And then what happened when I started doing my mantra of questions, I tend on forgetting everything. So on the topics that I had a strong command on back in the day, I started to forget them. I couldn't remember the drugs, the mechanism of actions. There's so much to digest. So I started on giving the revision a single try so i didn't actually revised everything from the book back from scratch i had made notes because i have this habit of writing notes and stuff so i i had made some notes for myself and i started revising and rereading that note those notes and then i started practicing active recall sessions on those notes and everything that i studied from all these three books and then i did it again and then i did it again so that that didn't take me a lot of time because obviously I was I wasn't studying the whole chapter from a book and when you have read something for the first time and then you actively recall it and then you do it again and again and again it tends to get stick in your mind and that's that's something that I always talk about and all these study YouTubers talk about it's the active recall method of remembering things and that is the only thing that helped me succeed in this exam and succeed in my medical school too and this is this this is basically the reason i ask you guys to practice that too so for all the people who were asking me uh, what this what strategies i used and how i passed the exam active recall and space repetition <laughs> were the techniques that i used so because i did it i did not do it five times but i yes i did it three times and I believe that was enough because on my exam day, when I was literally sitting on the on the on that desk with all those students around me and headphones in my ears, I was like, "This was the thing I was working so hard for, really." So yeah, it's not being overconfident. That's that's not overconfidence. That's just something I need you guys to know, and that's the reason I keep repeating it over and over and over again. Yes, it is. It is an exam to test your ability if you are, to test your qualification if you are qualified enough to be equivalent to a US graduate, but that's not an end of the world. I mean, it's an equivalency exam. It's everything that you did back in med school and everything that you're studying right now. It's, it's nothing out of the world. It's not like, it's not like a PhD exam or something. It's it's, I know it's hyped a lot because when I was in your shoes, I had the same questions. I was going through the same trauma. I had the I had the same anxiety of how I'm going to digest all these all these big books and stuff like that. But it's really not that hard if you if you do it the right way. If you if you recall it the right way, if you study the right way, you are going to get there. Because I think I I think I'm a below average student, and I think if I can do it, anybody can. Trust me, anybody can. No matter if you're starting ten years later, you graduate, or one month after you graduate. Okay, yeah. So the food was slightly here. So yes. So that was the whole point of making this video, but. Um, if you have any other questions again please let me know in the comment section down below or you can dm me on instagram uh, the handle is mednerdygram if there's anything that i can do to help you guys please let me know i will be honored and again thank you very much for watching this video and i will see you guys next time bye bye